unusual help and favor the basic thing god will give to a man look at what he said in scripture in verse 7 he said i will do nothing without first revealing it to the servant's words the prophet so it simply means what precedes god is his word before god will wrote a deliverance for the people before god will wrote miracles wonders for a people he will send first a word he might send his servant he might buy their own engagement with the word unveil a truth to that person via spiritual revelation such that it is expedient for that person to hold on to that word for its fulfillment the, the reason why God will do that is because every faith or commitment of scriptures that leaves absolute responsibility on God makes him not be qualified to be called God that's why even in Genesis, after creating the garden, he had to make a special tree, which he called the tree of good and evil. Because if he made no options like that, then it simply means that man had no option, but was compelled to serve him. So he had to give man what we call the introduction of choice and free will, to choose whether to serve him or not to serve him but because of your will and because of your word, pleasure. So when we say behind your conception there is a commission, you can separate two syllables there, the word go and the word mission. So understanding that simply tells you that you are not the original missionary. One person had a mission and discovered that I need somebody to accomplish it. Then he calls you and say, go to the earth, help me to participate in this way. And then you are now called what a commission so he sends forth his word to his servant for the people to hold on to that word till they see the replication of that reality upon their life so for this year our team is what unusual help and favor exodus chapter 12 35 to 36 thank you the bible says and the children of israel did according to the word of moses and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave them favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Are we together? So when God is releasing help or favor to a people, is to give them payment for the areas of their sufferings. Are we together? This were the children of Israel in the land of Egypt, being tormented, being in pain. The rescue mission agenda was via the mystery called favor. Every time in scripture, God is liberating a man, liberating a person, taking them from zero to something, lifting them from the sand of the earth to the top of life. It is through the mystery of favor. The Bible says of Joseph and God gave him favor before Potiphar and every other person in Egypt. Are we together? So favor comes to take you out of a painful situation that even in the midst of struggles, in the midst of the hardship of these times, you don't feel the heat because you are shielded by what? Favor. So why unusual help and favor? Number one. Fulfilling heaven's agenda for the ingathering of soul. Why is God deciding to release this dimension of himself upon mankind now? Upon us as a people, upon this ministry. The fulfilling of heaven's agenda for the ingathering of soul. The Bible says, I will shake the nations till the desire of all nations come to me. He said, for the silver of God are what? Mine, said the Lord. So when God is releasing this dimension of reality to you, it's not because he wants to make you just feel good. It's because of an agenda. Are we following? Marketing the gospel causes serious releases of resources. You can't push souls into the kingdom without massive resources. A great servant of God said the name of God is so heavy that you need so much of money to lift it up. Are we together? So you must have this at the back of your mind. 
and the purpose why God will do this for you first is because souls in this end time need to be what? Saved. And if you can't go, you groan. If you can't groan, you give. There is just something you can do. You have no excuse whatsoever not to participate in the final ingathering of souls of this time. Are we getting blessed already? Number two, for the glorification of God's people, I want to trust God that in time to come, few days, few weeks, few months, we'll have young men and young women like you, like this, writing out bills for crusade. And say, sir, please, can you just organize people to go and preach to Garatu? Put all the bills on me. That's what we are talking about. The ingathering of souls. Right? Men, there are men who write out crusade. A father of mine was speaking to me. He said, they said to him, any crusade you hold by here, he holds crusade in different nations and even across um, the country here. Every crusade she sponsors since start to finish. There are those who are looking for what to get from God. There are those who are saying, with the little you have blessed me, I will shock you to you and multiply me. Are we together? It determines what you are looking at. Number two, the glorification of God's people. Exodus 3.21 The Bible says, and God granted them favor in the sight of the Egyptian. That it came to pass they never went through life empty what handed so that people can see life and know that god is good even in the midst of the hardship in the midst of the painful situations men can see the testimony of god's goodness in your life glorification of god's people isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to 3 he said in these times there are nations will be covered with darkness there will be thick suffering and thick hardship he said but upon you the light of god shall what shine turn to someone and tell the person my case is different because i play by a different set of rules i am not governed by the economy of this world my supplies is from above that's why we are not moved whether dollar rise or dollar falls it doesn't matter because we are not sponsored by this earthly economy our life is not subjected, the Bible says, to the rudiments of these times. We live by a higher source of life. Are we following the glorification of God's people? Psalm 125, I think, and verse 2 3, it said that the rod of the wicked should not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands into what? Iniquity. There is a kind of hardship that can push men to iniquity because their faith is not yet rooted in the world. So even scripture confirms it. You think many people want to do the things they are doing? Do you know what it is? For somebody to see his mother or father at a time point, and the only option she has to raise that 9, 10 million for that surgery is prostitution. Sometimes when you see the kind of things people do, the Yahoo Yahoo and the rest of them, I don't support that and I'll never do. It is for the crave of survival. Is that not so? the craze of survival people are struggling to have what to eat so god we have to release unusual help to your direction and favor to glorify his people check through scripture the period where there is much suffering is the period where god's people were more elevated so you must understand this mystery are we following number three For the relevance and the dominance of the church why unusual help and favor for the relevance and the dominance isaiah 2 and verse 2 to 3 the bible says and in that day the house of the lord will be lifted up above all mountains of the earth and many shall flow into it saying teach us your ways so that's why the first thing you come to learn in the church is to be taught not just to pray and sing but to be taught that's why i wonder how you sit in church and don't write he said they will say to us teach us your ways so if you are coming to a spiritual school a spiritual hospital how comes you are not ready to take note as regards the writings and the teachings of god what you got of the place with excited that you came to church 
Are we following? To teach us his ways. The relevance and the dominance of the church. So the church will be in charge, taking sectors. We see believers rising, doing mighty exploit for God's kingdom. What is exploit? Attention commanding results. Attention commanding results. And that's why God is releasing unusual help and favor to his people. Number four, to be a blessing. No man is blessed until he is a blessing. No man is blessed until he is a blessing. Anywhere you are, let your presence be felt and your absence not. Genesis 12 and verse 2. He said, And Abraham, I will make thy name great and I will bless you and thou shalt become what? A blessing. So the end product of God's blessing is upon your life is that it should show on the lives of those what? Around you. That's why God will help you. Imagine God blessing you so much this year. Somebody in your lodge complains you have not eaten. You say, this is just 50,000 naira. Manage it. Somebody approaches you, I have not paid my school fees. You say, this is just, this is just 50,000. Manage it. Pay your school fees. Will you struggle with that person to follow your God? Our Christianity is too of talk and less of result. They come to a point in life where what the people don't need or what they don't need alone is the sermon. After you finish preaching to them, for three days you feed them. Are we following? Feed them. Do we understand? Sometimes they need to be fed to hear the word well. So you need, it's not the agenda of the church. It's the agenda of individual believers. Stop looking to the church or the pastor. You can be so blessed to be a solution. There are people in church who take care of programs. I say, Pastor, please just give me the name. While I was a student in the campus, I paid school fees for nothing less than five people every year. Even while I left the place I left, I tell them to give me names of people that can't pay school fees yearly. And I send it. As a student. You can be so blessed. This is how you position yourself for heaven's release by changing your mindset and belief system. What are you looking for money for? Cars, shoes, house. Is that what matters? Lives I want to touch. Souls that I desire to see saved. Tell your neighbor I will be so blessed. This year, in every currency of the world, in the name of Jesus. Number five, that believers will build intimacy and not be carried away by the craze of survival. Why unusual help and favor? That believers will build intimacy and not be carried away by the craze of survival. Mark 4 19. He said, And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches swallowed up the world. There are people no longer coming to church because they are struggling to survive. They are like the disciples that think that they have to be sent away to go and find food in the villages. Believing that you don't get such things also in God's presence. Are we together? The grace of survival. Uh, uh, he said, yes, of this world and the deceitfulness of the see they are made with a car with that and they are passionate to engage in that pursuit. It has the ability to what? Choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful. Poverty and hardship can eat you to a point you will doubt, doubt the scriptures you once believed. Poverty can hit you, hardship, difficulty that you will back at the God you once followed. You will, you will, you will disown the God you I love you forever. I love you forever. You will disown him because of pain. Are we following? Say to yourself this year, I enjoy unusual help and unusual favor. So are we getting blessed already? 
because we need to extend when the purpose of a thing is not known abuse is inevitable we can just begin to shout about the world unusual help and unusual why is god deciding to do it in this time so when he begins to once your heart is positioned right the blessing comes naturally we call it the the law of eventually in scripture once Paul plants Apollo waters even without prayer point what follows is increase those are what we call the invention it will happen by itself because the law is in place are we together are we getting blessed what are the proofs of favor how do you know that you are beginning to enjoy this favor number one unusual kindness the proof of favor unusual kindness that is gentle and special treatment people treat you specially they treat you they handle you and handle your matter with care then we can say there is a strange favor of god upon this man's life gentle and special treatment number two access and privilege access and privilege what is privilege privilege is an invent invitations to realms that are higher than you imagine dangote saying can we have a dinner together unusual access and privilege it's compelled by the favor of god number three are we getting blessed acceptance everywhere you go you are acceptable even before your enemies just like Joseph, they throw you in egypt throw you anywhere you are what accepted people just act like you that's number three number four announcement and visibility because favor brightens your star even if you hide yourself announcement and visibility suddenly it's not because you are doing something so big but you are just getting known by itself how many of you have seen those kind of mysteries you just see a man because like the way god lists men in his kingdom a season will just come you just see a man coming out everywhere pa, pa, pa. and he has been there for years what is happening suddenly the favor of god has now rest on his life are we following announcement and visibility and finally number five on that preservations over those that have advantage over you or turn themselves at you give me psalm 41 verse 11 preservation over those that have a, 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 an advantage over you or turn themselves against you this is one of the mystery i enjoy in my life this mystery called favor psalm 5 verse 2 said i will compass just don't worry stay on the scripture i will compass my servant with favor as with a shield where favor becomes a man's defense system people gather and gang up against you right from among them somebody will come and say sir this is what we plan to do for to you are we following the bible says by this i know that thou there is a way to no favor on a man did you see that that my enemy does not triumph over me whether i am aware not aware of their plans or agenda they can't just have their way. Are we together? By this I know that thou art favor me. What's the proof of help? Unusual help. How do we know that a man's life is being helped? Number one, a pressure-free life. Such a man is enjoying strange help. A pressure-free life. Number two, unusual ease speed and exploits second chronicles 26 verse 15 unusual is speed and for the bible says and uzziah became strong did mighty exploit because he was marvelously helped of god provoking unusual help and favor what do we do to tear up this reality upon our life there is something to do after peter finished preaching in acts chapter 2 about the outpour of the spirit the bible said the people were pricked at heart and they said to him what shall we do to be what saved every genuine sermon must end with a scriptural responsibility 
Are we together? Every genuine teaching end with a what to do. And the mother of Mary in John chapter 2 said to the disciples, whatsoever he asks you to do, do it. Miracles are simply produce of divine obedience. Whatsoever he asks you to do, whether it makes sense or doesn't make sense, just do it. Number one, genuine and intimate work with God. Second Chronicles 26 verse 5. He said, and he saw God in the days of the prophet Zechariah and God made him Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. The vibrance of your dedication to God determines the buoyancy of your destiny. This is not the period to become this is not a period to get weakened in God. This is a period to build more what? Intimacy with Him. And we follow. When you your life revolves around God, good will revolve around you. When your life revolves around God, good will revolve around you. Number two, you provoke unusual help and favor through the altar of prayer. Through the altar of prayer. First Chronicles 4 and verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Who do we call honorables in this country? Those in the house of representative. But his life did not look like it. People were seeing him as a big man, but it was not so in reality. He said, and Jabez cried to the Lord his God, that thou, Lord, will bless me indeed, that thou will enlarge my coast, that your hands will be upon me, that, that, you, that you will keep me far away from evil and anything that will cause me pain. The Bible says, and God heard his prayers. And God what? Heard his prayers. Prayer mixed with faith and anger produces outstanding results. How tired are you with the situations of this time? Do you allow the devil and follow with, ah, he's not, don't lie, he's just rising, no. Oh. He's just rising, though. We don't know what we're doing in this country, oh. Or you get there and say, Bara seketo The difficulty of these times will not have a hold on me. I raise a crowd in heaven. I survive above the winds of these times. Even when God sent forth Moses to deliver the people of Israel, what was his response to Moses? He said, I have heard the cries of my people. Are you crying or you are complaining? He didn't say, I have heard the complaint of my people. He said, I have heard the cries of my Their prayers have gone up to me. You are either sending prayers or you are sending forth complaints. Engage powerfully. It takes light and a to end the nights of your life. Stop complaining. My academics is going like this and going like this. Fight for it. That's why you're a believer. You have the advantage of the Holy Ghost. Stay in the place of prayer and say, Satan, see, life will not give you what you desire, but what you demand. Are we following? Life will not give you what you desire, but what you... Listen, life is not configured to be fair to you. You have to make it fair to you by the mystery of prayers. It's not and say I'll just be a good person I'll just be going like that then things will just be happening like that ah ah it's not configured like that you have to be jealous for your destiny are we together you see things around your life you are not comfortable about raise a cry to heaven and say Lord this must end this must see this situation must come to an end I take back my academy I take back my finances I take back my health don't let the devil have the final say in your life. Tell your neighbor, don't let the devil have the final say in your life. Listen, there are times of life you don't need to be silent. It is absolute stupidity to be silent up to depression. Give me Job. Let me show you a scripture. Job 13 verse 19. I'll tell you two times of life you should not keep quiet. Job 13 and verse 19. He said, 
who is he that will plead with me for now if I hold my tongue he couldn't hear if I hold my tongue so I don't do I'm a reserved person so I don't say anything I just keep going like number one when destiny issues are being dis discussed you don't keep silent number three stay with the word stay with the word stay with the word go back to the word you get into more depression where all your impact or all your inspiration is from social media you go you see the the kind of cars your mates are riding the kind of things that are uh, uh, that's happening to them you are under pressure behold i have set before thee open door and no man can shut it why for you had a little strength but however you kept my word you kept my word even when it doesn't look like it you kept my word god said i will make you a great person the circumstances around your life does not resemble it but you held on to the word and said i know my future is great i know my future is bright the circumstances around me now cannot determine my end listen a man with a past can consult god in the present to determine his future a man with a past no matter what it looks like can consult god in the present to determine how his future becomes stay with the word you come to church you heard the word this week strange realms of favor they want nothing they do nothing you said it's not for me do you know how men have believed this god do you know how they've believed this god do you know what it is for a man to leave his family and to carry his family and tell his kindred that they say i should go somewhere i don't know i should just be going that's why the bible says when he got there he cuts to a location and had a conviction that it looks like this is the land of the promise hear what the bible says. abraham said he said and he looked for a city whose builder is god should i explain that scripture it simply means he told himself this cannot be the produce of this encounter you look, look at what you are going through the process and, and dealings around your life does it resemble that you want to end in an entity does god waste his time with this kind of wahala he passed me through you think I don't know how my future will look like? That's what Abraham, he said, this can't be it. I can't go through this level of faith just because of this land I'm seeing. I look for a city whose builder is God. So stay with the word. That's what most of us do. You share the problem with your pastor. You share the problem with the brother. You came to church and your pastor said it is well. It's a mighty rema in front of you. Hold it with your life. The mercy of God. What provokes unusual help and favor? Tell your neighbor the mercy of God. Romans 9 and verse 16. He said, I'm now therefore. It is not of him that we let or run it, but of God that so what what mercy. That's why many are stranded today and not married. Because they were so reliant on the self in the fact that I kept myself, I did not spoil my life, so I deserve the best told you he's still by mercy the mercy of God see when you don't learn to appreciate mercy you'll be bitter towards those who enjoyed it because when you rely on yourself you throw away God from the equation and he leave you to accomplish it yourself it is not of him that will let or run it even though the person willed the person also ran but however the conclusion of the matter is that there is an equation inside called what mercy may your life not be empty of the mercy of god wake up each day and say lord let your mercy speak for me let your divine favor look at me for good pray i pray i have never once relied on my prayers who am i like david will say who is my father's house that you choose to raise the son of jesse a king in israel who you be who am i that you will carry your anointing and put on my life. Why should I look at my fasting life, my prayer? Do you know? Have you gone to Ori okay? Have you seen prayers? Pastor, you know what I'm talking about? Prayers with posture. 
Baba, 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 Baba. Somebody's going like that. Three hours. Number five is passion. Passion towards God's house and agenda. Passion towards God's house and agenda. Give me Psalm 132. Passion towards God's house and agenda. Psalm 132. The Bible says, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swear unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go into my bed until or give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place. Is God first in your life? Is God first in anything you do? The Bible says He swore. Go, give me, give me the next verse. Lord, we heard of it and effort. We found it in the fields of the wood. Next verse. Quickly, please. We will go into the tabernacle worship at his first. Next verse. Arise, O God, into thy rest, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness and thy saints shout for joy. For thy servants, David, sake, turn not away thy face of the anointed. Next verse. The Lord also swore. When a man swear towards God's house, God will swear towards his life. The Lord also swore unto David, He will not turn from it of the fruit of thy body, and I will set upon thy throne. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon the throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion, He has desired. Did you see that? See. Your proof of love for God is your passion towards his house. Give me Luke chapter 7 verse 5. Luke 7. The Bible says, at one time, a centurion man came to Jesus and said, please, my servant is versed with the devil. Come help me heal him. And Jesus was so busy at that point in time not to give that person attention. So don't be angry if you kept calling your pastor and he at that point. Even it was, it was so like that for Jesus. The Bible says, and they said to Jesus, for he loved our nation. What is the proof of that, Lord? He built a synagogue. If you love God, you will build this house and not destroy it. Anyone into the agenda of destroying God's house is a proof of the absence of love. You are just a traditional Christian coming there. When I growing up, I was walking through a street. I saw the sandbar of a church mounted over. I pulled down. I went got the cutlass, dug the hole, set it back. It was not my local church. Passion that this is not befitting to God's house. Passion, passion towards God's house. You must set aside an allocation for God's house if you want to provoke favor. You see, God is not careful towards men who are not mindful of Him. You can't come here and be crying to a God that you show no concern towards. That's the fakeness of Christianity. Church, you won't come. Service, you will not do. Commitment, you will not do. Then you come. Only you have a problem. You are not shouting more. Arise in your strength from where? Have you arisen yourself? See, if you do the right things of God, you will pray less. I didn't know till you date when I prayed against an enemy. This is 10 to 15 years. A man can live his life in such a way like the devil never existed. Have you not seen that for Job? The Bible says that it had to take God to remind the devil that Job was existing. It's because of the way the man called. Look at his passion. A man just gave offering 12 for each of his children. Then they came to say the children are dead. He said, thank you, Lord. Passion for his house. Luke chapter 12. Luke 12, 20 to 20, and um, 20 to 21. Luke 12. But God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then where whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? This is about a man who gathered to himself. Everything was about what? Himself. The Bible called him what? A fool. Next verse. He says, So is he that laid up treasure for what? 
himself and is not rich towards God. A man who has money that God cannot see is called what in scripture? Say it loud. Say it loud. A fool. I will never spend anything on myself that I've not spent on God. Some of you are using phones that is not even equivalent to your whole tithes and offering for a full year. Don't be crazy with that. Phone that the guy that steal or it's poison. Your whole offering for 365 days. And it's, something is wrong with you. Or you are wrong with something. Psalm 102, verse 23, verse 13 and 14. Thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her has come. Did you see that? He will arise and have mercy. So even mercy is the brother of favor. So when God wants to show a man favor, he first shows him what? Mercy. For the time to show her favor has come. Because of why? Next verse. For thy servant take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof of your kingdom. Their heart passes for anything that has to do with God. He said, I have watched it. Now is my time to show to you that indeed God is not unjust to forget the labor of love that you have shown towards his name. Hebrews 6 and verse 10. He's not unmindful. He said, it is time for the world to see that no man saved me for nothing. What is your passion? Please be dedicated towards God. Towards his agenda. Some of you can sacrifice for your girlfriend, not God. Your boyfriend said, I'm so busy. Can we talk 1 a.m.? You said yes. The church said there is prayer 12 to 1. You say it's not easy. Can they consider people? Now you have prayer points. You brought it to church. Meet your boyfriend. Are we together? One time, a young man was asking one of my father in the service. I come in, sir. I come in, sir. Sir, it's not as if I'm saying they are doing anything with the Tata offering. Or, but they say it is to God. I want to know, after we close on service, we time the God used to come and collect it. I like my father. And he replied him too. Last week, we are you sick? Who did you ask to pray? To who? So when it is sickness, I should help you and tell him. But you drop money, you want to know that he came down. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 7, verse 10, verse 7 down to 12. He said, and men receive tithes of men. You can only confuse a man that doesn't know this Bible. So when you ask him questions, he will start shaking. Number 6. Be crazy towards God's house. Acts 20, 35 and Acts 17, 25. Be crazy. Number six, the wisdom of God and discernment. Proverbs 14, 35, Proverbs 13, 15 and Colossians 2, 3. The wisdom. That's how you provoke favor. God can just tell you, hey, call this man now. <laughs> Raise your hand and pray this way. I say, Lord, sharpen my discernment. Say it, say it, say it, say it, Lord, sharpen my discernment. You can just Course, he'll say, Put a call to this person now, send a message to this person now, and that's all. You must understand the timing of the spirit. What did I say? The timing of the spirit. Because if Abraham had delayed when God said he should move, by the time he had gotten to Mount Moria, that ram that was caught in a kick ticket would have been dead and, and rotten. You don't know. That's why I will give a prophetic word and say, Somebody come out, and they are meeting us. After I said, The anointing to solve it has gone, it came at an instant. You are after service. May God sharpen your discernment to know where to be at the right time, the steps to take at the right time. That opportunities will not pass you by. You will not miss out of your help and favor in life. In the name of Jesus. Number seven, the honor of God. Joshua 3, 7 and 4 verse 14. He said, and I will magnify you before people. There is something called the honor of God. It's the opposite of rejection. When you go, people is just compared to want to do you good. It's because something is now resting on you. Call what? The honor of God. It provokes unusual help and favor. Pray this prayer and say, Lord, put your honor on my life. 
I pray that prayer every day. The honor of God. When God honors a man, put your honor. See, when the honor of God comes on a man, then people begin to do to the man what they wish to do to God. Listen, when the honor of God comes on a man, then people begin to do to the man what they wish to do to what? To God. Because of that honor. Number eight, think and trust God beyond yourself. Think and trust God beyond yourself. Sow seeds of favor. Be a blessing. Yes, you want to enjoy and you show help and favor. You to sow it. Help people. Right now in the ministry, every Wednesday is declared for us. Kindness Wednesday. Is that not so? Then look for something to do for somebody. Every Wednesday for this year. We're together. Can we pray that prayer again? Oh Lord, oh Lord, restore my wasted years. Restore my wasted years. Raise your voice and pray quickly. Ya kapa roof, shina kapa rete pe papo. Raka pa 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 pa. Help and unusual help and favor. We come to number one, influence, influence. God will give you influence. He connected to powerful people. You know why? Every time there was a deliverance and a salvation for God's people in Scripture, it was through influence. I show you an example, Esther. Mordecai say in a position for a time as this by her influence the whole jewish race was spared when it was a time for the preservation of jesus's body it was joseph of arimata he walked to put and pilate and said give me the body else it would have, have rotten there because the disciples fled influence are, are we getting blessed number two help we come through massive resources number three through all access number four div divine assistance expect see open your heart this year for the supernatural don't think no normal human being can survive these times the hardship is real are we together the hardship is real i enter into the public transport i sit down everywhere i say god but adventure is the person that is going to show me favor here today touch the hearts of me touch their heart touch their heart let my name pop up in the minds of the great mention me in the corridors of power even in my absence like you did for joseph so that i can wake up sleep overnight as a prisoner wake up the next day as a prime minister only this god can do that number three to come true for quality and life changing as connections six unusual acceptance and seven unusual kindness every year god brings forth his word year in year out you on you you begin to work um, and understand that it looks like those words never happened. They fell to the ground. Is that not so? You believe? Have you believed God crazily and said, "Ah, this thing entered me"? I believe, and the whole thing went like that again. You will pray one prayer finally, and I want you to pray it from this. Oh Lord, every enforcer of evil and wickedness in my life and family expire by fire. There are those whose job is to stand and make sure good don't happen in the home. Their joy is the sadness of a family. Say after me, oh God, oh God, every enforcer of evil, every enforcer of evil, in my life, in my life, in my family, in my family, expire by fire, fire by fire, fire by fire. Let your voice and pray.